What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We have officially made it to the first ever Super Bowl in the SFL. Your Toronto Thunderbirds taking on a team that really bested us earlier in the season, the San Antonio Voyagers, 13-4 going up against 12-5. and five. They got... Lamar Jackson, and I think that was a blowout game. I believe we lost like 40-something to 20-something. So this one should not be easy today. And just want to take a quick moment to shout out all the subscribers in the SFL. We're up to over 40 now, but special shout out to the boys who are going to be playing for a Lombardi today. All the subscribers on the Toronto Thunderbirds team. So kicking it off with Mr. Tubby McDouble here. Shout out at Wayne Kelly. He is our power back, of course. Tubby just had a great, great game last episode, going over 100 yards, and he's the 5'9", 260-pound power back out of Arizona State. Cannot wait to get those McDoubles edited, flowing on the screen for the touchdowns, and I'm hoping that he will score today. And then cannot forget about our man Mike Oxmall. Shout out at Rams fan in the comments. He's kind of like our slot guy. I know it says deep threat. But he usually plays in the slot role. But due to a couple injuries, specifically our number one receiver, Chris Olave, Mike here has been thrust into a much, much bigger role on this team. And he has been delivering. He has had some great games and some very, very clutch catches as well. And then, of course, our subscriber D-tackle combination here, starting out with Silas Vaden, the defensive tackle. Shout out at Silas Vaden. He is the 6'5", 280-pound D-tackle out of Auburn. He's had a couple big sacks in this uh, SFL playoff, so he's been making some noise and making a difference on the field and hoping that he can do the exact same thing today when you're playing against the likes of Lamar Jackson it's tough to bring that guy down, and uh, hopefully him and his partner, Jay Monstro, the other subscriber in the defensive tackle position, shout out at Monstro87. He's 6'4", 322, hasn't had a lot of game-wrecking plays in the playoffs, but in the latter stages of the regular season leading up to these SFL playoffs, he was starting to get in there and make a difference, so really, really hoping that he can have a big game as well. And then cannot forget about our cornerback, Jax Vaden, brother of Silas Vaden. So brother combination on the team. You love to see it. 5'10", 180, also out of Auburn. He had a big diving swat that didn't get registered as a pass deflection last week. I don't know why, but we all saw it. We knew how clutch it was. So Jax is, again, going to be defending Lamar Jackson throwing passes. So definitely not an easy task and hope that he is ready for it today. And then cannot forget about our punter, Jack Mavros. As much as I love you, brother, I'm hoping that we don't have to bring you out on the field too much today because I am i don't want to be putting the ball. I want to be putting up points. But if we do have to bring him in, he's a good solid punter, 5'11", 177 out of Washington. And that is your subscribers on the Toronto Thunderbirds. Can we bring home a Lombardi today? That is the question. And we got a new subscriber joining the SFL just in time for the offseason. So he will get to see a full season under his belt next year. Also joining Oilers Nation. So the Oilers got what? They got a quarterback subscriber, running back subscriber, two uh, wide receiver subscribers, a middle linebacker subscriber, and now a strong safety subscriber subscribers so six subscribers on oiler nation cannot wait to see them next season but here we got thomas francisco the strong safety shout out at one bot boy 248 in the comments thomas is a six foot 205 pound safety out of texas tech and he's got 90 speed to go along with 90 zone coverage and also 94 acceleration so he will definitely be uh and 90 catching too wow okay so he will definitely be making some plays, you know, in those nickel nickel sets and the cover twos and the dime packages, things of that nature. I imagine he will be getting his mitts on many a pigskin in season number two of the SFL. And real quick public service announcement here, guys, with the uh, future of this channel, with the new games coming out, of course, we got College Football 25 dropping in just a few weeks. And then, of course, the new Madden game coming out in August. So what we're going to be kind of doing here is we're going to keep going with the SFL series here, this one, until Madden 25 comes out. Probably going to do some college football content as well. I definitely will do some college football content when that game drops as well. 
And then when Madden 25 comes out in August, we will start a new SFL series, you know, in Madden 25. And kind of the cadence of my videos dropping when Madden 25 comes out, we'll have a rotation of a main franchise series and a SFL series. So it'll be main franchise, upload, SFL, upload, main franchise, upload, SFL, upload, etc., etc. Um, also, make sure you join the Discord. I'll link it down below. We got a few people in that community now. That is specific to the SFL, and it's just going to make things so much more easy and interactive to be in that Discord. So make sure you check that out if you have Discord, trying to grow that community as well. And also, I just realized Lamar Jackson is hurt. Um, so, <laughs> and the man that he took over for several years ago in Baltimore, Joe Flacco, Joey Flacco, Joey Flacco, is gonna be the quarterback. Wow. Um, okay, so the Madden gods are smiling on us today. Joe Mixon is the running back. He's still here. But I cannot believe if we win this game, <laughs> I gotta almost put an asterisk next to it, right? Because they're I think Lamar Jackson might have even been the MVP of this league. So with him not here, I mean that just makes things so much easier. They got a talented roster too, just kind of skimming through it here their defense is good they got some good wide receivers but that loss to lamar jackson it almost doesn't even seem fair <laughs> but uh okay well i can rock with that and just got a little bit of confidence boost going into this game and this is it guys chance for all the marbles here playing for the lombardi trophy and the or maybe we'll call it the smalls trophy i don't know it's the sfl not the nfl so we're playing for the smalls trophy i'll think of a better name next season I don't really care, but if you guys are fired up for this game and the series as a whole, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm getting very close to 1,000 subscribers, and I sure do appreciate that. I'm trying to uh, actually start monetizing this channel. You know, it's a lot of hard work that goes into putting out these videos. So if you're not subscribed and you're watching and you like it and you enjoy this content, please do me the favor of hitting that subscribe button. But Without further ado, guys, we are going down to wherever this game's getting played. Didn't even see it. So let's get on down to the field and get ready for the Super Bowl. And here come the Voyagers, Sands, Lamar Jackson. Ah, it's tough, man. But you know what? Joe Flacco had quite the run there at the end of the regular season in real life. So maybe we'll see that Joe Flacco. Or maybe we'll see the Joe Flacco that throws four picks. I don't know. He's notorious for that. And Jordan Love now getting his first shot at a trophy. Of course, uh, not there yet, but I'm really feeling good about him and the Packers. Uh, if you guys know, I'm, a, I'm sure most of you do know, but I'm a huge Packers fan. That is my team. And I'm very, very excited for that. But I'm an even bigger Toronto Thunderbirds fan. So I am very excited for this game. And we are going to see Joe Flacco and the boys as Justin Tucker boots it back into the end zone. Touchback for the Voyagers. Did Flacco even play? Curious to see his stats. He played a little bit, and those are very Flacco-like numbers. You know, three touchdowns, three picks. Flacco is a gunslinger, and he can, you know, he can rack up the yardage with ease, but also known to throw some costly picks from time to time as well. And he's going to start this out shotgun. It's going to be a give to Joe Mixon up the gut. Almost didn't have him there, but luckily our subscriber DTJ Monstro was there to get him. Looks like Mixon was getting ready to uh, to bounce off the tackle there. Maybe pick up a nice game, but Monstro was there to meet him. And this time, Blacko will go into the single back. Is it going to be a gift to Mixon again? It is not! But it's going to be a sack by Matt Milano, and also Bobby Wagner was in there as well. I just can't say enough good things about Matt Milano. It's like, you know, the old saying... You don't know what you have when it's gone. Uh, we didn't have Matt Milano all season, regular season. He came back for the playoffs, and my, oh, my, he has been doing his thing. Doing his thing there is Flacco getting the ball to Tyler Scott, the rookie, but he's going to be short of the line to game by two. So nice opening, and that was actually uh, Jax Vaden there making the tackle, I believe. So nice play by Jax. And opening drive uh, for our defense was very good. We limit the... The, uh, I keep wanting to call them the Ravens now because of Flacco and also Lamar Jackson, but we limit the Voyagers to a, you know, a punt. That's awesome. And now let's see what our offense can do here in the SFL Super Bowl. Start spread shotgun here. A little uh, opening drive run to Kareem Hunt. Kareem 
has been up and down. Um, he had a terrible game early on in the playoffs, finished the game with like negative six yards. But he was uh, kind of a touchdown machine, I would say, in the regular season. And so we'll see what type of game he has. But now we're going to go single back. And these little RPOs have been our bread and butter. I am going to ID up the right side of them as the mic. Just in case Oxmall gets followed, he will not. This should be an easy, easy first down for at Rams fan. Sure is. Mike picks up the first, which is something the Voyagers couldn't do on their opening drive, might I add. <coughs> Stay single back here with Oxmall. Oh, Chris Olave's back. Nice. I forgot about that. Okay, that makes uh, life a lot easier. Darren Waller, way from uh, Jordan Love to thread the needle there. Got to be careful. He's been launching picks. I mean, in fairness, I've been launching picks. But what I'm saying is picks have been getting launched, okay? But having Chris Olave back, I forgot that he was slated to come back in this game. And perfect timing. He's our uh, press guy. You know, when he gets pressed with no safety help, chances are I'm going for the deep bomb. And guys like... Zay Jones and company haven't really been able to make that work as well as Olave. Tubby picking up four on his opening carry, though, getting this to the 33 of the Voyagers. Go ahead and test draw here. So happy we're not having to worry about a star defensive tackle. We've been having to do that like the last six episodes, I feel like. Aaron Donald, Dexter Lawrence, and whoever, who did we play? I don't remember. There was, there was another guy that we played uh, in the previous game who was a big big uh, factor there so not having a you know star player there on the defensive line is nice i think on third and five i trust the screen pass to hunt gotta get it away though we got heavy pressure hunt needs some blockers he's weaving he's bobbing he's shifting blockers were set up great there by uh ryan kelly and others and that was a really really good answer to a first bit of adversity really that we've had all drive and now we are in the red zone, first and 10. Olave's not getting pressed. That's the first thing I was looking at. You better believe your freaking britches on that. And, ooh, Darren Waller open. Fitted in the seam, love. That wasn't the most accurate pass. Kind of lofted that thing in there. Luckily, it wasn't picked. Now it's second and 10. Come on, I form here from the 20. Going to be a play action and probably looking for, ooh, I like Waller there in the corner. It's an overthrow by love, though. All right, Jordan, settle in here, brother. Your first couple passes were looking pretty crisp. And not a big fan of these last couple ones, I'll be honest with you. But this is a chance to redeem yourself, and I am probably... Uh, Olave may get open in the corner, so that's probably going to be my first look. Get it in there, love! Bang! What a route by Chris. We had to lead him way to the right, and that is the intensity at the receiver position that we have been missing don't get me wrong the guys that we have have been playing well but chris just kind of brings that 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 it factor right i was gonna say x factor but he's not an x factor at least not in madden terms but he definitely brings that it factor and he showed us there as we go up seven nothing great start from the T-Birds. See if old man Flacco here can turn back the hands of time. We know he's capable of it. Seen that happen in real life. And there's a nice route from Joe Mixon. Wrestled down there by Bobby Wagner. But that was a nice wheel route out of the backfield. Voyagers get their first first down of the game. And it comes with about four and a half minutes to go in the first. So this could be a, this could be a nice response drive from them. Mixon trying to do it himself. Can't wrap him down. Tried to go for the strip there with Antoine Winfield. Mixon made us pay. Gets this thing all the way to midfield. We know this Voyagers team can score, but we know they can score with Lamar Jackson. Can they score with Flacco? That's a big question mark, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna play like it's Jackson in the backfield. And okay, well, Joe Mixon slips a tackle. Can Jordan Poyer make the touchdown saving tackle? He cannot, and that was a huge, huge chunk play there from Mixon, picking up about 45 on that one which puts him at 60 yards rushing so maybe no Lamar Jackson no problem I guess Mixon may be the guy to watch for of course uh, he's a little gas so Darius and Edwards is in there and that's gonna be a touchdown no not gonna be a touchdown that's Dontavian Wicks who I am really really high on him man I watched every single Packers game last season and let me tell you what he is gonna be a dude now, we got to make sure, oh my God, who is who is so open there on the outside? I don't like that whatsoever. It's Mixon. He's going to make us pay. All right. Well, that was the Joe Mixon drive there for sure. 
the nice response by the Voyagers. And it looks like this one is not going to be a walk in the park like I had thought slash hoped. I mean, it's still early. It could be. But game now knotted up at 7. See if I can get my man Tubby McDouble involved here. We're going to come out of I form and follow the lead block of Big Kyle. You check. Oh, the hole was there. And we just needed Joe Tooney to hold his block for a split second longer. Gain of four, not bad, but that one had uh, a lot more potential. Absolutely. Now, here on second and six, I'm looking at Valdez Scantling. Should I streak him? No, we'll keep him on the drag. Just go underneath to Valdez Scantling. Going to be short by one. Maybe should have let MVS, or should I say MVP. He's been our MVP as of late. Should have let him run a little bit longer, but no worries. Third and one, can Tubby pick up? One yard. That is all we need. Going to get it with ease. Just run right into traffic. Tubby going to be trying to shove guys aside left and right. That's what he does. And what he also does is pick up first downs. And I would so like to get the run game established. That made the game so much easier last week. I mean, Tubby has stopped. One thing, one, one good thing about him is that uh, he does always kind of fight forward for extra yards. Though rarely is he ever stopped in the backfield. But that one could have been so much more and uh, only gaining two. Not really what you want to see. I'm going to go on the outside to MBS. Jordan Love kind of putting a little bit too much on some of these balls. Pause. You should clean that up, brother. Third and eight. Do we go to Chris Olave again? That's the question. It's going to be PA Crosser. Is he tense? Oh, he's so open. Get it in there, Love. Oh, man, I should have canceled play action. I was trying to mash that circle button the second that uh, Jordan Love dropped back. and But that play action animation, I, uh, Olave was open right away. I needed to hit him very quickly. And unfortunately, you know, we get, it's nice to see Jack Mavros on the field. But uh, like I said pregame, don't want to be putting the ball too much as the Voyagers now have a chance to go up. So need our defense to come out with some intensity on this drive. Gotta lock in on Mixon. He was the man on the last drive and looking like he's gonna be the man on this drive too. Tough to bring him down. Jordan Poyer could not. And Mixon now at five for 64. Yaya Diaby brings him down. And this should be the last play here before the end of the first. Probably gonna be run. And I need to see some guys in the backfield with the quickness. No, it's gonna be a pass. Haven't seen too many of those from Flacco. Three, only four of them as a matter of fact. And that is going to be third and six with the end of the first quarter. So yardage, I mean, it's pretty similar. Like, we have 62 passing. They have 64 rushing. We have 20 rushing. They have 60-something or whatever. You guys you guys know what I'm talking about. Yardage is about 80-something per team. And uh, they're killing us on the ground. We're killing them through the air. But I imagine Flacco is going to have to go through the air on this one. So see uh, if that's effective. Oh, that's his tight end there, Michael Mayer. Rookie out of Notre Dame, about to be a two-year man in real life. Clutch on the first down grab. Flacco now, single back. Got to figure it's a run to mix in, which it is. And man, these lanes are opening up. They got a decent offensive line. Don't get me wrong. They got uh, Bernard Raymond and Isaiah Wynn and uh, Jason, Jason Kelsey is still on this team. If you guys saw that as I was skimming through the roster. So their offensive line is decent. I mean, it's nothing crazy, though. But, man, they're playing at a high level today, and there's a great stop there by, I think that was Zach Cunningham, I want to say. Uh, it was somebody. I don't know who it was. But, anyways, it was a nice stop, and this is a big, big third and inches. We're going to send some pressure, and Yaya Diaby, can you? This is going to be a run for sure. Come on. Come on, Yaya. Get back there. No, it's a play fake. Oh, wow. I feel like every time I say this is going to be a blank, certainly, pass or run, it's always the freaking opposite. Okay, so this Voyagers team, even without Jackson, are playing really well. And uh, Mixon is the guy that I am looking at for sure. Can we get some guys back there? I mean, it's just like we got we got people at the point of attack. But this offensive line is doing a good job. They're setting nice blocks. They're holding them. They're pushing Mixon forward and really just making life difficult for us in all capacities. So, going to need to stop that. Please, there's Winfield. I was usered on him. Shot through that gap like a cannon. Mixing a little slow to get up, and that's going to make it a key third and two. And pretty much selling out to stop. Off the run here, guys. Boom. That's why 
I saw Miles Garrett back there. I saw Bobby Wagner back there. And our defense, bend but don't break. They were playing a little soft, letting the Voyagers get some yards. But they came up clutch on that final final drive there, or final part of the drive there, and forcing a punt. Now the question is, can we, can our offense do anything? We look great on our first drive. Second drive was kind of eh, and uh, Zay Jones is getting pressed too. That's the first thing I saw. So we are going to send my man only one safety deep, so this could be, oh yeah, baby, it's there. Come on, hit Zay Jones. Thank you. All right, I was starting to worry about Love a little bit. His passes weren't looking the crispest. That was extra crispy KFC style on that pass as he finds Zay Jones for 35. We get a nice pull from our guard Joe Tooney here. Tubby could have some room to run. Let's just follow the big man. Oh, I mean, that was <laughs> Tubby McDouble just uh, face playing and EJ Speed or whoever had the first, first attempt at him. And we know that's what Tubby does. He's left many a uh, palm print, hand print on players' helmets. He is not afraid to get in there and get physical. And probably going to need him to do the same on this drive. We'll just go. <sighs> rare rare uh, pass catch there from Tubby. Don't really get him. Unless it's a screen pass, of course. He's he's always out there on the screens. But aside from that, don't really get him out there on routes. And here on third and seven, I mean, I kind of want to send Olave. If we, I'll tell you what. If we send Olave, we should have MBS, I would think. Or maybe just Olave. Look at that. The soft cushion on the zone coverage. Love starting to come alive now. Good play calling by your boy here as we get it down to the seven in great, great scoring position. All right, Tubby, let me edit the McDoubles raining down on the screen. I really want to, brother. I really want to. Can you get in? Oh, man, where in the heck did the defender EJ Speed come? He had some speed on that one for sure because he uh, changed gears and basically covered... Covered about half the field there to chase us down. And uh, we're going to stay run this time outside. We're going to run to the far side of the field. And if we can get a good block, Chris Olave might need to hold one as well. Kareem trying to change directions. I mean, gave it a, gave it a good old college try. But still going to be seven yards short. Now it's third and goal. See if we can get some good slant routes here. Got to watch these middle linebackers and see which way they go. I don't like any of that, man. Yeah, I wasn't trying to throw a pick because I've been doing that a lot lately. And the middle of the field just looked a little too, uh, too clogged there. So that's kind of a letdown. A uh, couple big plays on that drive. Thought it was going to end up resulting in six. Got to settle for three, but it's not the worst thing in the world because at least we still go up. And if our defense can continue making plays like they did on that last drive, that last sequence, I think we'll be okay. It definitely starts with Joe Mixon because uh, the other Joe, Joe Flacco, he doesn't really seem too uh, interested in throwing passes. Uh? He's only thrown a, a handful. So I feel like if we could shut down Mixon, take him out of the game, make the Voyagers a little one-dimensional, I think we should be all right. Bring out our 4-3 defense here. Also got a spy on the field. I know Flacco's not a runner, but I just like having that, just that presence to kind of sit there and guard the field. Oh my God, that is, wow, great, great attempt there from, I think that was Dontavian Wicks. It was either Wicks or Lockett. I saw that superstar symbol there. It was a great attempt, but we had heavy pressure there, which forced a kind of an overthrow by Flacco. And I'm going to use her up on Winfield. Definitely watching Mixon. We'll see if he comes out of the backfield. That was not a pretty pass at all. Going for Michael Mayer. And that one was just flat out off. Guessing pass. Shade inside. Doing what we do. Our defense thrives off of these situations. See if we can get these Voyagers off the field. He's going to hit Mixon out of the backfield. Hell of an effort. But he is going to be one yard short. And I'm sure in this part of the field, yeah, they're going to bring out the punter. And we got a chance to double dip, man. There's only a little over two minutes left in this half. We get the ball first, too. So if we could just kind of do, a, you know, one of those good old methodical drives, not worried about the clock whatsoever. Oh, Patrick Pete. Oh, my God. He might score. Have I ever had? Oh, do not let Flacco catch you. Do not let Flacco catch you. He's gassed, trying to dead leg him. Patrick Peterson still going. Oh, thought I was about to have, I think, my first ever punt return touchdown in Madden 24. 
And Patrick Peterson, he's he's a little old. He's an elder statesman, man. He was running out of gas there, looking for the nearest BP. Couldn't find it. And Flacco, I think, or somebody was unfortunately able to get him down. But that sets us up beautifully. Three downs to work with. Pretty much the same uh, field position we were just in. And I didn't really want to get down here that quick, you know. But uh, if we score points or points, we'll go ahead and let this thing tick down to the two-minute warning. All right, come on, T-Birds. We really, really need this. Uh, got a couple slants there on the left side. And I think it's MBS. Bang! Hangs on for it. MVP. No, not MVS. MVP. Marquez Valdez Pantling. Stop it. Get some help. That's what we're going to call him. Because he really has been our MVP. I mean, he is just been coming up so clutch i talk about it every episode but when chris olave was gone and of course mike oxmall got got thrust into a bigger role he was doing great but nvs really stood out and i mean okay that's good we go up i kind of wish there wasn't almost a full two minutes on the clock if i'm being honest but it is what it is so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the boys. I'm going press blitz here, man. Make Joe Flacco beat us. Because so far, he has not been the Joe Flacco that was having that great run at the end of the regular season. But that's a good one. That's Tyler Lockett. First time we called his name. And the Voyagers are going to go hurry up. I hate these situations. I more often get beat than not. Oh, I mean, there we go. It's Michael Mayer. So open. And I don't like this. And they're just going to slow the tempo down now. And no reason to, to really not. They got all three timeouts and only took two plays to get it all the way to our 31-yard line. Um, so Joe Flacco must have woke up. Hey, look, remember when he was sleeping on the bench last season? Anybody see that? My man's old. Give him a break. It takes him a little bit longer to get up and get moving. 27 yards to go, already in field goal range, so if we can uh, force them to kick a field goal, that's a huge win. Also a huge win is Dontavian Wicks picking up the first down. And I'm telling you, why, mark my words now. Regular season starts in a little little over a month. Dontavian Wicks is gonna be a problem. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I watch every Packers game. This kid is good. Oh, come on, get to Flacco. So close. I know he was I know he was targeting Mayer because I was running step for step with him, and that's probably why he did not throw the ball. Flacco coming out here with three wide receivers and their tight end Mayer. Gotta watch also Mixon out of the backfield. He's been out there catching routes. I mean, that one doesn't really do much of anything as he gets out of bounds, stops the clock. But it's third and seven, 35 seconds to go. We can safely guess pass, obviously. I'm not going to do any shading. We'll just let our guys play how they play. And Flacco going underneath. It's Wicks again. That one was clutch. And now they got to clock stop. Only one timeout, though. So they got to be taking some end zone shots here, one would think. Let's see if Miles Garrett can get back. He's been having such a great playoff run. Can he get back to Flacco? Flacco going to throw it away. 12 for 17 for a buck. 15 is Joe. That will make it second and goal. See how Flacco responds to a little pressure here. Going to press up with the boys as well. No, they can't. They don't feel like pressing. All right. Milano. Oh, I whiffed it. No, 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 no. But Marcus Peters. Oh, my God. And I don't know what that sound effect was that I just made. No, 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 no. Bruh. Is Peters going to get gassed like Patrick Peterson? I don't think so. Marcus is going to score. A 90, probably 99 or 98, or maybe I think he caught that in the end zone. We'll call it a 101-yard pick six from Joe Blacko. So I guess it's a good thing that I whiffed that tackle. And how about that? T-Birds opening up 24-7. to seven. And for the doubters out there, you know, if there are any, I'm sorry. Still on all Madden. I know I, I say this every so often. Still on all Madden. Just didn't change the sliders. Everything is the same. These T-Birds are just balling out here in the SFL playoffs. 24 to 7. And the Smalls trophy is all but within our grasp. As long as we don't have a crazy second half meltdown, uh, which is possible. I'm, I'm not ruling that out. That's definitely possible. 
When we start with the ball, you know, we can think about uh, running it inside as our focus because we're going to try to, you know, get this clock worked down as, as much as we can and probably go defend the medium pass because that's about the only spot of the field that Flacco saw any real success. I mean, he did okay, but that that uh, that last pick six, man, that could have been the dagger. Let's give Peterson a chance to return this one too. He had a great return earlier. Not going to make anything happen there. He's still on the still up and going to start our opening drive from the 17. All right, so major, major mistake on my behalf. Uh, so my audio got messed up coming back from halftime. And I so I had to shut down OBS and restart it. And I never hit the record button. Uh, yeah, super, super salty about that. Luckily, it wasn't much of a game. It was 34 to seven. Uh, we won, so we got the first, but man, I just lost half the footage of the game. There wasn't a lot that happened in the second half. So at least, you know, the first half was pretty much it. So, wow, super, uh, super no, no on my part. Marcus Peters gets the MVP because he had that pick six. Lamar Jackson was the MVP of the league, which sucks because he was not able to suit up and show up in this game here. Could have been a much, much different game. He also got Offensive Player of the Year as well. And I'll go ahead and show you if I can still uh, view the schedule if it's not too late. Should be able to. Um, just want to make sure. League schedule, yeah. Should be able to see the Super Bowl here. Um, yeah. Okay. Just showing you. I didn't turn it off and restart the game to get the win or anything like that. I'm just an idiot. And I forgot to hit record on my recording software. So, yeah, sorry about that, guys. But, hey, the good news is first season is in the books. Next episode, we are going to start out right from uh, the off season, and probably have a whole episode dedicated to the off season because I'm sure there's going to be new subscribers that join in and watch that episode. And I want to you know, show all the teams who's on what team. Really thinking that a lot of our subscriber players are going to hit free agency. So again, please let me know either on the uh, poll that I'll post here on YouTube or in the Discord. Join the Discord if you haven't already. It's, it's a good time. But let me know if you would like me to either just let your subscriber player go wherever they go, right? Let the wheels of fate decide. Or if you want me to get you back on the team that you requested, I can do that. That's that's easy. Just jump to that team and trade for you. You know, I'll make you a punter real quick and and 12 overall and I'll be able to trade you for a pack of Skittles and a couple candy bars. But, you know, whatever the case may be, sorry that I lost half the footage there, but it's fine. I mean, uh, I'll, I guess I'll, I should show the stats. I want to show the stats because uh, we have subscriber players on our team. So let me go ahead and get that pulled up here and we'll go through the box score. So again, 34 to seven, didn't force the win, didn't quit, jump back out or anything like that. And it was just utter dominance. Joe Flacco, no touchdowns and two picks. And again, if this guy right here was playing, I think it would have been a much different game because he absolutely lit us up in the regular season. And even Jordan Love didn't need to throw that much, only 187, two touchdowns and a pick. Um, so we don't usually see that. We usually see Jordan Love going over 300. Tubby does go over 100, so that's awesome to see. Joe Mixon played great, but unfortunately, they just got in a position where they had to be a passing team. And apparently with Flacco, that's that's not what they are. Uh, receiving, nobody really lit the stash sheet up because nobody had to. Take a look at Mike's, Mike Oxmall, one catch for nine yards. Tubby had two for 12 as well. And then getting a look at our defenders here. No stats for Silas Vaden, but that's okay. He still gets himself a uh, SFL ring. So I think that's a pretty, pretty fair trade. Jax Vaden, his brother had five tackles and had a pass deflection. It's not registering in there, but you know, whatever. We know, we know. Jay Mongstro had a good one though. And a couple of those were on third and fourth downs as well. Two tackles and one big TFL. Think that was on... Maybe that goal line stand, but I remember calling his name. I hope that wasn't in the footage that uh, I didn't capture. Oh, Chandler Jones randomly on the team. Okay, sorry about that, Voyagers. And can I forget the punning of Jack Mavros? Only had to call him in once. He booted a 59-yarder, but of course only netted 39 because of the touchback. But all things considered, what a stellar, stellar game from the T-Birds. And when we pick up next episode, guys, I will... First of all, make sure that I get the whole dang thing recorded um, and 
Second of all, it's going to be off season. We're going to see what happens around the league here, and it should be a very, very good time. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one for the SFL offseason. Until then, peace.